Welcome to the world of Dune. Yes, while Warner Brothers hopes this will be its next Star Wars, there's an equal chance where it could be its next John Carter. And like Star Wars, Dune releases his first set photos in the pages of Vanity Fair, with Andy Leibowitz-like pictures, but not on the same Andy Leibowitz-type level. I mean, this is so much like Star Wars, they even have a cast member, or the, who is the main character, that looks exactly like Kylo Ren in some of these pictures. It's insane. But, like John Carter, this is a story that is set to inspire many others, like Star Wars, Aliens, and Game of Thrones, which would make any studio executive salivate. But, you could also spot the similarities between Wonder Woman and Avatar, because in both movies, it's around a group of people that visit another planet in another tribe where they learn about industrialization while the main character falls in love, which happens in both movies. But even though there are many flaws in these photos, like the costumes, oh my god, the, co the costumes are just so awful. The, this movie's biggest strength is in its cast. The casting, though, is amazing. Okay, so I'm about to break down, like, the basic plot points of Dune. And, first off, this story, it's a little convoluted, but it's a very good story, and it's a very good read. So, basically, what happens in the book, and what will probably happen in the movie, is that there's this house called the House of Atreides, which is run by this powerful intergalactic family that runs an entire world. And this family, or this house, is tasked to, well... Basically going to this desert planet called, a, what is it, Arachidus or Arrakis. And basically what happens is that um, they're supposed to um, find this drug because it's the only place they could find it. Is this like little spice-like drug that everybody in this galaxy depends on for different purposes. And the family is not happy about this and they don't want to go. Because they basically know it's a trap. But this takes Timothy Chalamet's Paul on a journey of self-discovery with his mother where he finds out that he is the chosen one, as always. Oh, and Rebecca Ferguson is also in this movie. She's such a good actress. She doesn't get the recognition that she deserves. She is so good. But in this movie, she plays Lady Jessica, who is Paul's father's concubine, and she's a and she's a part of a tribe of women that are able to read minds and control people with the sound of their voice. So, Jessica's people task her of giving birth to a savior. But she decides to um, give birth to a son that Paul's father always wanted. So, he inherently becomes the chosen one with all a whole slew of powers, actually. She also ends up having to train Paul after they get separated from the house. And Paul's father, who is played by Oscar Isaac, um, is the leader of a treatise. And Timothy Chalamet's character, Paul, he strives to be like his father in the beginning of the story. And also, Paul is also trained by two additional people, um, Josh Brolin's German soldier and the swordsman, played by Jason Momoa. Let's get back to Oscar Isaac. Now, in the book, his character is betrayed by Selen Skarsgård's The Living Rhino, who just has it out for Oscar Isaac and his entire house, which forces Jessica and Paul to run away to the desert, to the desert planet Arrakis. And on this desert planet, Jessica and Paul meet up with the Freemen, which is a tribe of just locals led by Javier Bardem, and where Zendaya is a member of the tribe, and Paul's future love interest. Zendaya's mother in the movie is also ecologist Dr. Luette Kine, played by Sharon Duncan Brewster, who is trying to keep the peace between the two peoples in order to save Ericus, because they're just tearing the planet apart with their anger and just their wars and stuff. All in all, I, I really don't like the visuals here, especially the costumes. They just look horrendous they just look like the whoever does like the costume design here just put all the worst parts of sci-fi costumes and just put them on the cast members 
But then again, the cast just looks so good and they're just, it's just a very talented cast that I think they could rise above it. So what do you think about this news? Are you excited to see Dune in the, the in theaters when it eventually comes out or maybe when it never comes out if this quarantine thing never ends? Share your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe to Grayson Talks Everything.